Hi guys and girls, I'm Obsidian Ant and welcome back to Elite Dangerous. Currently there are three community goals on the go. One of them is the Colonial Initiative. I'm not going all the way out to Colonial unfortunately today. The other is a Valentine's Day one. And of course the one I'm going on now is to deliver some commodities to the Peacock system. So in order to do that, I'm going to go and collect my Type 9 as that has a huge cargo bay by comparison to the Aspia. And I'll be able to deliver many more products in a single go. Last en route there, I just want to say thank you to everyone on Reddit who wished me a happy birthday for yesterday. Very, very much appreciated. And as I said there on the thread, that was a massive surprise. Waking up in the morning, checking out Reddit to see a huge thread there with so many comments was just absolutely wonderful. So thank you for that. Really, really does mean the world to me. Here then is the cash boost system. And this is where I tend to dock nearly all my ships. The Type 9, a big lumbering beast, very very slow. I tend not to pilot big ships for a reason. I tend to prefer ships that are far more manoeuvrable. But when it comes to cargo running, the Type 9 really is my default option. Now although I do have enough money to buy an Anaconda, I still haven't made that particular purchase and I don't know as yet if and when I will. Now commodity running, trading and all that can be a particular problem especially on community goals. Many people have trouble finding that, these items. So go to the website eddb.io, click on the commodities list, choose the commodity that you actually want and it will bring you to this screen. You can then type in here the system name, choose that and choose if any what type of landing pad you want to land on. I'm going to choose large because I've got a large ship and it will then you give you all the systems in range of the chosen system that carried that particular goods. The column in the right, the one with the time, shows you when that check was last made. Some of these are quite a few days ago. You want to look for one that is a few hours or even a few minutes ago. And we want to look for one that has got a high supply number, as well as one that isn't too far away. So choice made, I'm heading out to that new system now and I'm going to be collecting up a whole load of robotics. The thing is, there are a few in-game tools you can use to try and locate commodities, but in the past I found them to be extremely unreliable, and therefore those websites have become my default way of finding commodities. So there is a link to that website in the video description. Here we are then is at Suzuki Terminal, and I'm about to pick up these robotics here. I can carry, I think, 442 tons of cargo. Shortly after I filmed this particular clip, I did also swap out my fuel rack or my fuel scoop for a larger cargo rack, giving me around about 460 tons. The station I'm at here is around 100 light years away from the Peacock system, which I do need to get to. Fortunately for me, my Type 9 has a jump range of 26 light years, but when it's fully laden like this, that drops down to around about 19 light years. So it's still a little bit of a trek, and well, if you are coming out this way and you don't have a ship with a very high jump range, you may want to try and find a system a little bit closer to your chosen destination. The station here, Phillips Dock, the one we have to deliver the commodities to for the community gold, is absolutely gorgeous. And whilst I come into dock, let's have a brief look at the environment. No doubt many of you will remember that in the PlayStation 4 trailer, there was an asteroid base briefly showed. That basically looked like a station molded into the interior of a huge asteroid. I'm very much looking forward to seeing both the exterior and the interior of that particular station, as well as its function of course. Hopefully it is a place we can dock at and not just one of these locations that they introduced into patch 2.2 that are locations we can just visit but not interact with. So there we are, commodities all sold up and that of course should have got us up the tiers for this particular community goal. And it does help if I go to the correct menu there on the mission board on the community goals. We can see we're now in the top 50%. That's just with a single delivery. Right, onto the galactic map then. And I'm here for a specific reason. I'm about to try and unlock Ramtar. Now, what he needs is a huge amount of classified scan data banks. And they're not the easiest thing to find. Many people have pointed out. So here is how you get them. You need to find a system that is in outbreak. So use your uh, map filters, your star filters to do that. Put the population filter up as high as you can. You want to look for the most populated systems. And you'll see a little blue system just at the top there. 
And that, of course, is a system that's in outbreak and it has a high population. There's not too many of them dotted around. So that is the one we're going to go for. And if I swap out to my ASP, that is just a single jump away. Now, classified scan data banks are things you get from scanning ships. You simply target the ship, point your ship towards it, and your ship will do the scan. If you do get lucky and get what you need, it will go into your data banks. So when you're at your chosen location, head towards a convoy beacon like this one, and you will find a multitude of Type 9s, Type 6s, as well as other hauler vessels here. By all accounts, these are the best ships to get the particular scan data from, although I have found that you can get the scan data from pretty much any ship. But here, you find quite a high concentration of ships, so therefore increasing your chances of getting what you're looking for. In addition to all that, this environment is completely hostile free, so no one is going to start shooting at you, no one is going to start targeting you. You simply select the ships, as I said, and you should get what you want. But these only drop maybe 1 in 10 or 1 in 15, so you may find yourself here for quite a long time. To be perfectly honest about it, I don't find this stuff to be particularly exciting, and I wouldn't actually call it gameplay. Nonetheless, if we want to unlock that engineer, it's something we've got to do. Now, one last tip here, don't listen to anyone who tells you you can only get these classified uh, scan data banks from hauler ships. As you can see here, I've got one from a Sidewinder. The engineers have been sitting around for quite a few months now, and, well, they're extensively used. And, of course, I suspect that a lot of people who want to use them have already got them unlocked. But if you're like me and haven't got them unlocked yet, this is a good way to come and get the data needed to unlock Rumtar. And for all the information you need on the engineers, do check out the links in the video description. There's a website called Inara, and that will help you out immensely. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.